Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles. Today is July the 18th, it's Wednesday morning here in the shop and I've got my helper with me today, Denise, and she's running the CNC Machining Center. And I'm gonna bring you in, show you what we're doing today, what I've got her set up on, and she can run this machine all day today and make a bunch of parts for me. So what we're gonna do today is I'm machining some of the direct ignition shell holders here out of stainless steel. We made some a while back out of aluminum, and we have found out that the aluminum shell holders are just not holding up. I've got several customers that have the aluminum shell holders, and within a hundred times of being used, the aluminum all extrudes and galls up inside and makes it hard to get the primer modules in and out. It makes it hard to line the primer modules up straight with the primers. So. We're just gonna go ahead, bite the bullet, and make these out of stainless steel. Now, I'll bring these in closer so you can see what I've got here. And this first one, this is what it looks like when it comes off of the lathe. So I turn this on the lathe, CNC lathe, cut this shape, part it off, and it leaves this little burr up here on the top, which is no big deal, because we're gonna get rid of it now in the CNC machining center. Then we're gonna put that this part in the machining center and we're going to machine it into this and that will then hold the direct ignition primer module and I have one of those right here so this is the direct ignition primer module it's got a half inch of threads on it it's got a primer pocket in it that's been deburred chamfered primers go in real nice and it just simply slides in here so that you can prime it and take it out, put another one in, prime your next one, so on and so on. So I'm gonna take you in, show you how this all works. I'll show you the tools that I'm using to machine these and um, I'll get right back with you here in just a second. Okay guys, we're back and I went and got another set of tools. I've got several tools. I always buy everything in multiples of at least three when I buy a tool. So I always have extras if one was to break or get dull or wear out. So I went and got my extras. And this right here is a solid carbide quarter inch end mill. This is a roughing finisher type of end mill. It's got these little cuts in it that breaks up the chip so you're not pulling out a great big long sliver. Makes them easier to wash away and, and ex extract them from whatever your, your work piece. So the first thing we're gonna do is drop this in the vise, which it's not machined yet. And this end mill is gonna come down and it's gonna come in here and it's gonna cut a slot. Then it's gonna cut another slot and it's gonna keep dropping down until I've got to the bottom. Then I'm gonna come in and do a wrap around and come back out to clean that up real nice in there. Now this end mill does most of the work. So then we're going to come in here with this little milling cutter. This is also solid carbide. This is a keyway cutter. This little cutter right here costs about a hundred bucks. So they're not real cheap, but you got to have them. And I buy all my tooling from this company right here. This is Horn. They make some of the best end mills and cutters. Uh, Anything you need to use for milling, machining, turning on the lathe, they've got a solution for you. They, this is a really good company and I buy all my tools from them if, if at all possible. So next we're gonna come in, we're gonna drop down into the part to the right height and we're gonna come in with this keyway cutter and we're gonna go in, cut that slot, come back out, and then we're gonna come back in one more time with a finish pass and clean it up. Then the next step is we're going to use this little tool. This is a 45 degree chamfering tool. It knocks the burrs off all your edges. So we're going to come in first and we're going to come right here. And we're going to go all the way around the edge of that part. That's going to knock the sharp edge off the top of this part so you don't get yourself cut while you're using it. Then we're going to come in and we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and we're gonna cut the, the burr off of the bottom edge of this part. Then it's gonna come up and cut the bottom, cut the edge off of the top of this slot in this part. 
So the way this thing is designed, it cuts on both sides. And it cuts top and bottom. So you can get into some really tight places and do what you need to do. Then the fourth tool, which is the last tool, is a 265 drill bit. That's a 1764 drill bit, it's 265 thousandths. We're gonna come through here last operation and just clean the burrs out of that hole. And that's pretty much it. Takes about three minutes to run apart. I'm gonna bring you in now and we're gonna run a couple. I'll show you how they work. Okay guys, let's go in here and look inside the machine and I'll show you what I've got going on in here. These are soft jaws. It's what we call a soft jaw. They're made out of steel. And we have machined a pocket right here to drop that primer module down into. Then we have machined a cutaway here so that the tools can get down into the vice jaws and do the work that they need to do. Now, there are several ways that you could have held that part, but the best way to hold it is this way right here. It's completely surrounded by a jaw. It's got almost 100% clamping pressure on it. It's not gonna move on us and it's not gonna fly out of the vise. The tooling's not gonna suck it up out of there when it's trying to do the work. So this right here is working very effectively. We've had good luck. We machined about 100 of these yesterday. We got another couple of hundred to go today. And had I been making a couple of thousand of these things, I could have put two pockets in here and I could have set two vices up. We could have ran four of these at one time. But I'm only gonna run 500 of them so there's no sense in doing all the extra work and using the extra uh, soft jaws. And it may be a long time before I run these again, so I didn't want to just burn up two more sets of soft jaws to make these parts, so we're just doing them one at a time. It doesn't take that long, and I've got Denise here today doing these for me. So let's go over here and look at the box. Here's some of the parts that are not finished. And here's some that she got done yesterday that are finished, and I've got a, another box full of them in the other room. So they start out looking like that. They end up looking like this. And then the only thing left we need to do is knock off a little burr right here on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and let Denise show you guys how this is done. And she starts out by putting one of them in the vise. Okay, we're going to start with Denise putting in one of these shell holders into the vise. She drops it down into the pocket. Make sure that it's nice and flush. Puts the vise handle on the vise. Tightens it up. Takes the vise handle off. She blows the doors on the machine. And then she can reach over here and hit the green cycle start button. Now. The machine's going to start changing tools. Here's our quarter inch end mill. see we're doing several passes to get to our bottom depth. We're not trying to hog it all out at one time. And there I believe is the finish pass. So now we're going to change the tool. We're going to put the keyway cutter in. Come down with the keyway cutter and it drops it right down in that pocket. Going around the corner right there. And 
now it's coming back out. We've got blood coolant going in there, flushing out those chips. Here goes the finish pass. We run the finish pass a little faster because we're only taking off a couple thousands to uh, clean that up and bring it to the proper size. Now here comes our little bitty deburring tool. Going to do the top edge first. Going to drop down in the pocket, do the bottom edge. Then it's going to raise up just a little bit and do the top surface of the slot. Now it's done, comes back out. Going to swap out the tool. That's our 265 diameter drill. We're going to go in and just clean that hole up. And there you have it, fellas. It's all done. So, change the tools, does the whole thing again. And we'll do that 500 times here in the next couple of days and we'll get these done. As soon as I get these done, I'll put them on my website along with the direct ignition primer modules. We've been working on these here in the shop now for the last month or so. It takes a while to get all these little parts together when you mass produce them and make so many. We're making uh, a lot of these parts so that we'll have them in stock for you guys when you need them. And we're also trying to get the price down on these parts by manufacturing more than a handful of them at a time. So by making hundreds and thousands of them, it gets our prices down. So you'll be surprised when you see the price when I get it listed on the website at what I'm going to start charging for these things. and. Uh, I hope to have that done pretty soon. Now you can look over here at the control screen and I can look at this control screen and tell what the machine's doing, where the next command's at, where it's at in the program, machine position, what tool we've got on here. This tells me what type of tool we're running. I've got the speeds and feeds. Here's the program right there, written all out in G-code. So, pretty much tells you everything you need to know while the machine's running. And then down here is just some more of the control panels. But, that's pretty much it, fellas. That's how we make these um, shell holders here at Hankins Custom Rifles. They are made out of solid stainless steel. Once you buy one of these, it should last you a lifetime. For any of my customers that did purchase one of my aluminum shell holders, I'm going to replace that free of charge. You send me your aluminum shell holder back and I'll send you a stainless steel one free of charge because the ones that are made out of aluminum just aren't holding up. So contact me if you do have one of my shell holders and I'll give you a free stainless steel shell holder. Don't hesitate to give us a call, send us an email, 
and um, I'll try to get you set up with the right components the first time around. And until next time, guys, y'all have a great day.